So she was sick from probably 99 to 2003, a second uh, relapse with the disease and passed away in 2003. And about six months after that, I um, started experiencing what I thought were physical ailments. I was having dizziness and I was, I thought I had the flu all the time. And, you know, I I'd spent probably two, three weeks basically in bed, but I was afraid to even acknowledge it, you know. I wouldn't have even, frankly, once we did diagnose it, I certainly wasn't sharing it with people. And it was a huge obstacle for me, and one that makes the depression and anxiety worse. The shame, the guilt, and then you start becoming panicky about being panicked. And But when you can talk to people about it, you just say it is what it is, I'm feeling a little panicky, or I'm feeling a little down, and then you talk it out, and it, it, you don't have that extra layer of of, uh, I guess, the stigma. Thankfully, I had Alex, who suggested to me early in the process that this could be a, you know, something that I may need to, to talk to a psychiatrist about and not my, my GP. If you know Gord, you know that he's like really, really gregarious and outgoing, and uh, he loves, he's very social, loves to go out, loves to hang out with friends, so he started having trouble sleeping, um, and he'd wake up really in the, early in the morning, go to work really early, and he also wasn't really eating, so he was losing weight. And then he, what really triggered it for me was when he w wouldn't want to go out and see his friends. When it, when it first, like the, sort of the onset of his depression, and it was definitely triggered by his mom's death because he'd never, never displayed any symptoms before then. I encouraged him to go see someone, to talk to someone like a therapist, but I think at that point he was still a bit resistant and saw depression or, or mental illness maybe as a bit of a weakness. Um, and didn't want to almost admit that, that it could be happening to him. And then I was at the one of the breakfasts where you guys had done the videos and there was a mother um, whose daughter had had shock therapy and you know I think she had tried to commit suicide or had had suicidal thoughts. And I remember the mother said, um, you know, you're only ever as happy as your saddest child. And that sort of made me think, you know, I have children and, and with it and with Gord having the depression, it could easily be, one of my children could have it, and you know, if we could, if there was, could, something could be done to help it, you know, be, help people recognize the problem and treat it early so it doesn't end up, you know, with, you know, 13 year olds committing suicide and things like that, it would be nice. I think there was something kind of ingrained in me that needed to be shattered, and uh, you know, watching Alex suffer through what, <laughs> you know, I was going through ultimately I think shatter that and said this we, we got to look at everything and we have to talk and we do and and our kids certainly will have the benefit of learning about what I've been through and what Alex has been through and uh, you know it's just not going to be there's, it's not going to be the same anymore in our family put it that way. Mm -hmm.